How's everybody doing today? Been a little while since I talked to you guys. It's December, so we've been stocking up the store with livestock and dry goods, getting ready for the holidays. This morning I got a little time on my hands, so we're gonna go over ick management in a reef tank. A lot of you might say, why ick management? Uh, I quarantine all my fish, my tank doesn't have ick. The sad truth is, Probably 90% of us are running ick management tanks and we don't even realize we're doing it. No matter what your quarantine procedures are, the chances of ick getting into your system are extremely high. It can happen any number of ways. Let's just say, for instance, you've got a full quarantine setup going for your fish. It's complete setup, it's going great. You do have a fish in that system that has ick. You're working on that system doorbell rings or somebody knocks on the door. You go to answer the door and you're walking by your reef tank and you see your prized Walt Disney acro frag has fallen and it's on top of your master scully and it's stinging each other. You instantly jam your hand in that tank, pull that Walt Disney frag off, well, all those water droplets that were just on your arm from your quarantine system just got into your main system and there's a really good chance that ick went with it. It's very, very, very hard to keep your main tank ick free. You might not know what's in there because you probably have a nice peaceful setup going. Your fish are well fed. Your fish aren't stressed out, so it's not showing up. Number one way to manage everything properly, if there are no signs, keep your water nice and pristine. If you're running a reef tank, chances are your water is very clean to begin with. That is step one. Step two is feed foods that are high in proteins. We use the Hikari, spirulina brine, mysis, all the mega marines. They have a very mixed variety of vitamins in them. It's all very good stuff. We also use this Vitachem. It is an additional vitamin supplement. It keeps the fish very healthy. If you have tangs in your system, do yourself a favor, get a veggie clip and keep them full of nori. It keeps their immune systems up. It keeps the ick from showing up. Now, here's the problem. We add a new fish. Say you've got a yellow tang and a naso in there and you just have to have a powder blue. You've quarantined this powder blue for a full 30 days, everything He's past quarantine, no problem. You put them in your display. All the tanks start fighting with each other. About two days in, you notice everybody's got ick spots on them. How did this happen? That powder blue was quarantined, everything was good. My tank was clean. There was no ick in my tank. There was no stress in your tank. The ick showed up because a stressful environment was created and tags are the main cause of this almost every single time. Now you've got to deal with this. What are you going to do? Are you going to tear your tank apart and try to catch that powder blue because he was the problem? Well, here's the problem. you got to catch every single fish that's in that tank. You can leave your inverts and your corals in there but you've got to remove all the fish. You put them in your 30 day quarantine, that 30 days is up, you're good to go, you put all the fish back in, there's another fight between the tangs. Oh, the ick is back, how is that possible? I just quarantined all these fish for 30 days, everything was good. The ick was still in your tank. The ick life cycle is about 72 days. Even though you quarantined your fish, the ick was still in the water column. You've got to leave that tank fishless for at least 72 days. I personally recommend going 90. And that's to get your tank egg free again. And if that's the case, and you're never gonna add another new coral or another new fish, there's a good chance you have an ick-free tank now. Keep in mind, if you're adding new corals, the ick does not come in on the coral, but the ick comes in on the water. So therefore, you have to quarantine your corals as well. Since it's in the water with the corals, you gotta quarantine that coral for 72 days. And that's without adding any more new corals. Every time you put a new coral in there with new water from where it got shipped from, you gotta restart that 72-day clock. So this is why we're talking about ick management. Say you see a couple of spots in there, you didn't tear the tank apart. You're gonna go, I'm gonna try doing ick management. The best way to do this is take some of your tank water, put it in a specimen cup or something, defrost your frozen food in this cup. When it's defrosted, 
get a small net, strain it through the net, rinse it with some RODI water, even tap water at this point is okay because you're going to then grab the net and squeeze all that water out of it. Put it back in this cup. Add a couple of drops of Vitachem for some extra vitamins. Now there's this great product called Metroplex. It treats the fish internally for the ick and any other parasites. You also need this product called Focus. The Focus is a binder for it. The third is called Canaplex. This treats bacterial and fungal. Why would you need that if you're treating for ick? Because when the ick bursts out of the fish's body, it leaves a small sore behind and you're using this to make sure that sore does not get infected. If you have fish that are eating flake food, we already have medicated flakes with all this medicine in them. Just not everybody's fish are eating flakes and the flakes honestly aren't that nutritious. So I recommend going the frozen route. Highly controversial is using garlic. The reason I personally use garlic is you've got to keep these fish eating. If these fish are eating, there is a probably 90% survival rate with them. If they stop eating, they're pretty much done. It's hard to get a fish to start eating again once it has stopped. The garlic is just like you. You walk home and say your mom's cooking dinner and it's Italian and you smell that garlic, it instantly triggers a hunger response. It does the same thing with the fish. Very, very good to get the fish eating. Once you've got all that said and done, if you're not running a UV sterilizer, I highly recommend you hook up a UV sterilizer. There are several models available. If you have a small tank, this is an in-tank or in-sump one. It treats up to 100 gallons. You put this in the tank or in the sump, it has its own power head with it. So you just plug it in and you're up and running. There's a larger model that's good for up to 250 gallons. I use these on my tanks at home. They work very well. If you're just setting up a large tank, everyone always forgets the UV sterilizer. If you are just setting one up, this is an inline one that you plumb in. This is the best of the best. Is it going to keep your tank completely ick free? No. Is it going to help? Yes. It also helps drastically with algae issues. UV sterilizers are very, very important. Back to how it can get in your tank. If you are running a quarantine system, buy multiple nets. Have that quarantine or hospital system set up in a different room than your main tank is in. It can transfer from nets. It's been rumored to transfer from somebody who's running an air pump and the air bubbles are bursting at the surface and just a drop of that water gets from your hospital tank into your main system, you have ick again. I hope this helps you guys get through one of the most painful parts of this hobby. Just know if you get into a saltwater tank, at some point you are going to have to deal with this. It's just part of the game. I've had great luck running ick management systems because like I said, probably 90% of the tanks out there have ick in them and we just do not know it. Have a great day, guys. Good luck. <laughs>